Doom Eternal will be releasing in but a few weeks, and I've had that irresistible need to rip and tear both to hone my reflexes and to get up to snuff with the surprisingly great Doom lore before March 20th. I imagine you in the audience also want to go back and play Doom 2016 on PC, and this video is for you, especially those of you with a mid-range GPU. What do I mean? Well, here is a very mid-range GTX 1060 playing the game at high settings with a 4K output. Fantastic image quality, but performance is going up and down constantly. Would it not be great if you could have more resolution when you want it, and more performance when you need it? Something wonderful has happened, so now you can. As a part of the id Tech Unlocker and Doom Legacy project, we have full access to Doom's console commands and launch variables in 2020, as I was kindly shown by the user Ian Babbitt on Twitter. This means we can finally access real-time dynamic resolution scaling with Doom on PC. This technology of varying the internal resolution in real-time and scaling to your output resolution chosen was an amazing help on consoles to get Doom running as well as it did there. Here's that same area earlier with balanced dynamic resolution scaling. Still quite high res, but it also keeps the performance up. In this video, I will tell you how the resolution scaling works in Doom 2016, and how you can set up your game to make usage of this powerful feature. First things first, to unlock the console in Doom 2016, you need the Legacy mod and version 201901. There are a lot of places you can find it on the net, but I have taken the time to upload the DLL file and its documentation to the PC Gaming Wiki. You can find the link to that below this video. To install the mod, just take the dinput8.dll and drop it into your Doom directory right next to the game's executable files. In game, use the tilde key on your keyboard above tab to access the game's console. There are 13 variables controlling dynamic resolution, and we're interested in a specific few, and they all start with rs underscore. But before we dip into those, let us turn on com underscore show fps and set that to 1. This will show the game's tick rate, the current FPS, but importantly, the status of the game's internal resolution. By default, it will show RS off, meaning dynamic resolution scaling is off. The first most important variable is RS underscore enable. If you set it to 1, it scales only the horizontal axis of resolution in real time. 2 scales the vertical axis only. Setting this to 3 scales horizontal axis first, and then the vertical axis. With it set to 3, the game works under the conceit that horizontal scaling is less obvious than both axes scaling at the same time, so you won't see it scale vertically unless the GPU is being absolutely thrashed. After the horizontal axis is already at 0.5 and it needs to drop the resolution more, then the vertical axis will start scaling downward. I recommend setting this to 3. After enabling resolution scaling, the game has to be forced to allow individual axes to scale, actually. To do this, set RS underscore force fraction X and RS underscore force fraction Y both separately to zero. The next important variables control what your frame rate target will be and how aggressive the game will scale the resolution to keep that frame rate target. You have RS drop faction and RS drop milliseconds. The first controls the frame time amount targeted where anything over it will drop the resolution by the integer given of RS drop faction in one frame. Then you have the raise fraction and raise milliseconds. If the GPU is rendering a frame under the amount set by raise milliseconds for the amount of frames as RS raise frames is set by, it will increment the resolution upward per frame by the amount set by raise fraction until it starts needing to drop the resolution again. The last important variable we have after this is the RS underscore minimum resolution scale which is simply the minimum resolution that the game will allow itself to drop to. A minimum quality standard, basically. This is the total game resolution. So setting this to 0.83 will just allow the horizontal resolution to scale down to 0.66. At 0.75, the horizontal resolution scale will scale to its minimum of 0.5. With this set to anything below 0.75, then the game will also start scaling the vertical resolution. So at 0.73, the horizontal scale could scale to its minimum of 0.5, and then the vertical scale could go down to 0.96 at a minimum. These are the basics, and perhaps you already feel confident to use these variables based upon your GPU and target frame rate. 
but I think before I give recommended values, it could be instructive to show off an example of ineffective dynamic resolution scaling with an adaptive sync monitor at 60 Hz, so you can understand how these variables all come together. Here I have set RS drop milliseconds to 16.5 and the drop faction to 0.01. So very incremental, but right on the cusp below 60 FPS, which is 16.6 milliseconds. Then the raise milliseconds is set to 16.0 and the raise increment also to 0.01. I left the minimum scale resolution to 0.83, which is its default, and left the raise frames amount to 5, which is also its default. Since the GTX 1060 here is at 3840 by 2160 output, where it was constantly below 60 FPS no matter what, these settings make it so that in calm areas where the minimum scale resolution is enough to bring the game up to 60, like here, the frame rate is still inconsistent and drops below 60 FPS constantly. This is because the drop millisecond amount is too close to our target frame time of 16.6 ms for 60 FPS. The smallest environmental changes like a single spark flying or me changing my weapons causes minute changes to the rendering load pushing the frame time over 16.5 and over 16.6. This happens to be above or at the threshold for adaptive vsync, meaning the game tears for almost no reason. So that value needs to be even lower than our chosen refresh rate and target frame rate. So it's not that great at the moment. While running around this area and engaging in combat, you can also see how the game is dropping below 60 FPS in general. This is because our minimum resolution scale is not aggressive enough at 0.83. In combat, the horizontal resolution bottoms out at a minimum of 0.66, so it is constantly dropping frames when it should actually need to go lower. So that didn't work. Let's make adjustments. First with minimum resolution scale. Having run the game at native 4K and seen the worst performance there, I know that the worst frame rate I saw was essentially 30 FPS, and actually a bit below. So in terms of total pixels, that means the GTX 1060 can do 3840 times 2160 times 30 frames per second of pixels, or 248,832,000 pixels in one second. For 60 frames per second for that amount of pixels, that would mean 4,147,200 total pixels for a frame. Since the game starts scaling horizontally to a minimum of 50% before vertically scaling, that means we have a minimum constant vertical axis of 2160. Therefore, the horizontal axis needs to hit 1920 at its worst to keep up the frame rate, or 0.5 of the horizontal axis. That would typically mean a minimum res scale of 0.75. But GPUs do not scale completely linearly at all with resolution at times due to different things like geometry, transparency, or compute heavy functions causing the frame rate to drop inordinately. So really, there's no reason in general, I'll say this to everyone, to not drop your minimum resolution to 0.5 as I see it for any and every GPU, just as a precaution for the worst case scenario. If your GPU is good enough, it won't ever drop to this anyway. But how should we adjust the millisecond targets and the raise and drop rates? Ideally, the game would just adjust these things automatically based upon your GPU load and a range of other factors in real time, like Titanfall 2 does. But alas, we are flying manually here. Here's where we need to think a bit. We want to have breathing room on the GPU so that it's not always pegged at 99% like the bad example I showed. But we also don't want it to be too low so that the resolution is higher in scenes that have less action going on. We also don't want the resolution to be changing so rapidly when sitting still so that the game has a light pulsing that can be visible. That is really a lot to think about and more than I can realistically show in this video. So as a compromise, I have sacrificed my time to save you your time and have instead come up with three different dynamic resolution profiles. Aggressive, which aims to keep performance nearly perfect for the worst combat scenarios, balanced, which can drop when it needs to, yet will prioritize resolution more, and then lazy, which prioritizes resolution at the expense of FPS consistency and is best for variable refresh rate users or adaptive sync users who do not mind tearing. Aggressive sets RS drop milliseconds to 14, RS raise milliseconds to 13.5, and RS drop fraction to 0.01 and raise fraction to 0.01.
This has a perfect frame rate 99% of the time in my testing and usually keeps the resolution scale between 1440p-ish resolutions and 1080p on this GTX 1060. It can aggressively drop resolution though, so you will see more obvious distinctions between combat and just walking around. Balanced has less obvious dropping of resolution in combat and a higher overall resolution, keeping it closer to the 1440p range much more often. It just has a tiny bit worse performance since it is not dropping as aggressively. Then lastly, we have the Lazy preset, which fully focuses on keeping resolution rather high at 1440p and higher rather often, but it is not very good about keeping V-Sync locked as a result, as it floats more freely around the target with more gradual resolution changes. It generally looks the most excellent, but not great if you want to lock to V-Sync in my opinion. Here I recommend using this preset if you have a variable refresh rate display and do not mind tearing with adaptive sync as found in the options. If you want to scale these presets to 120Hz or 144Hz, all you have to do is divide the drop and raise millisecond amounts by the respective integer. So 2 for 120Hz and 2.4 for 144Hz. But in case you just want to get into the action and not bother with any of this at all, I have provided links to TXT files in the description below for each preset at each level of refresh rate. You merely need to copy these TXT files into the base folder in the Doom directory and execute them in-game by opening the console and typing exec space the file name dot txt and hit enter and it should work as long as you have the mod DLL installed. Some last things to mention before I go. Dynamic resolution scaling requires more VRAM than running the game at a static resolution. I found this out by trying to get the game run well on a GTX 1060 with ultra virtual texture settings. No matter how far I set the millisecond thresholds, or no matter how far I let the resolution drop, the game would always drop frames heavily when I fired the BFG here. Even allowing the game to scale to 10% total resolution did not fix it. In fact, it broke resolution scaling as the game went pitch black after firing the BFG. Apparently negative 30% vertical resolution doesn't work. Whoops! As Richard Ledbetter smartly reminded me, Doom 2016 under Vulkan slows the entire rendering down when it runs out of VRAM instead of hitching or stuttering. With this in mind, dropping the virtual texture in cache to high from Ultra solved this problem completely. So if you are experiencing a slowdown and don't know why, drop the virtual texturing down one notch. Though I think this will only really be a problem on 6GB cards like the 1060 here. Regarding AMD performance, I did try and get this to run on an RX 580 but was having an awful time with it. For some reason, Doom 2016 was running worse than usual, even after reinstalling the game and the drivers multiple times. And when turning on dynamic resolution scaling, the bloom broke and disco lights formed all along the screen. Perhaps this is some driver regression weirdness just on my test PC. Let me know in the comments below how DRS works on your AMD GPU. Now just to wait for Doom Eternal and Doom 64. And until then, I hope you found this video entertaining and perhaps a bit informative. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Also, please consider following us on Patreon to get this video in the highest quality available. If you want to talk to me about dynamic resolutions and the like, write a comment below or follow me in Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell. Und auf Wiedersehen.